Accolades can usher in great trouble for your body. Censure can herald misery. Why can favour and disfavour both be harmful? Because both accolades and censure, when filtered through self as ego, always place us in jeopardy. But when the universe becomes yourself, when you love the world as yourself, all reality becomes your haven, reinventing you as your own haven. Only then will you transcend tense to fully be here now. Only then no harm will the universe proffer, nor you to her, for you will be not you but she, and both the universal great integrity. That which we look at but cannot see is the invisible. That which we listen to but cannot hear is the inaudible. That which we reach for but cannot grasp is the intangible. Beyond reason, these three merge contradicting experience. Their rising side isn't bright, their setting side isn't dark. Sense less, unnameable, they return to the realms of nothingness. Form without form, image without image, indefinable, ineluctable, elusive. Confron confronting them, you see no beginning. Following them, you see no end. Yet riding the ploughless plough, can see the timeless Tao, harvesting the secret transcendence of the now. In ancient times, the people knew the great integrity with subtlety and profundity. Because they are so unfathomable to us, we can describe the ancients only with great effort. They were, co they were cautious as those crossing an icy stream, wary as those surrounded by dangers, dignified as guests, yielding as melting ice, innocent as virgin wood, open and broad as valleys, merging freely as muddy water. But today, who can remain patient while the mud so gradually clears? Who can remain still while the moment for action so slowly emerges? Who? We observers of the great integrity, who, who in our times, like those ancients, when never seeking fulfilment, are never unfulfilled. Allow the heart to empty itself of all turmoil. Retrieve the utter tranquility of mind from which you issued. Although all forms are dynamic, and we all grow and transform, each of us is compelled to return to our root. Our root is quietude. To fully return to our root is to be enlightened. Never to experience tranquility is to act blindly, a sure path to disaster. To know tranquility is to embrace all. To embrace all is to be just. Justice is the foundation for wholeness. Wholeness is the great integrity. The great integrity is the infinite fulfilling itself. There are four types of leaders. The best leader is indistinguishable from the will of those who selected her. The next best leader enjoys the love and praise of the people. The poor leader rules through the poor leader rules through coercion and fear, and the worst leader is a tyrant despised by the multitudes who are the victims of his power. What a world of difference among these leaders in the last two types what is done is without sincerity or trust, only coercion. In the second type there is harmony between the leader and the people. In the first type Whatever is done happens so naturally that no one presumes to take the credit.
when the great integrity was abandoned, humanity and justice appeared. When knowledge and teachers appeared, hypocrisy was their inevitable accompaniment. When relationships lost their harmony, filial piety and parental affection were suddenly birthed. birthed. When a nation succumbs to chaos and corruption, patriotic politicians are always at hand announcing themselves. Banish the intellectual, discard knowledge, we will all benefit a hundredfold. Eliminate all institutions of charity and justice, we can then return to our natural love for each other. Let everyone be released from our addictions to shrewdness and profit, then fevery will disappear. These three negate the great integrity. But to negate these negotiations is insufficient. Three affirmations are also necessary. The first is to embrace simplicity and integrity. The second is to consume only the needs of our body and soul. The third is to allow our love and concern for others to define our essentiality. It is sometimes deeply depressing to be a re rebel knowing that we can never share most people's way of life, nor can they share ours. Schooling stuffs the brain of our children with trivia. The more the trivia, the more their anxieties. They, indoctr they, ind they indoctrinate the children to believe that the consequences are grave when they fail to distinguish good from evil and agreement from disagreement. What? What gross nonsense! To, to escape the rubbish of all this so-called knowledge in the winter, people run to the great feasts of lamb, pork and ox, and they climb high in the mountains to view the first signs of spring. We are so different, having no desire for the trivialities nor for their compensations. We are like infants, not yet knowing how to laugh, ever wondering and having to ever wondering and having no home to which we may return. While most people are obsessed with superficialities, we feel empty. While most people feel they know so much, we, we feel simple-minded. While most people believe they live happily in the best of all possible worlds, we are despaired to witness this world. It is so painful to know that we will always be outsiders, endlessly moving like the ocean aimlessly blowing like the wind. While we fear what others fear, we don't treasure what others treasure. Our treasure is the great integrity. However, until it is shared, it will not be the universal integrity, for we are part of them and they, and they are part of us. The great integrity is a paradox. It is inherent in the universe, yet, yet its form is so elusive. It is the vital essence of every entity, yet nothing announces its essential character. The great integrity was apparent before time, space and matter appeared to separate. How can we re-mind and re-infuse ourselves with this very touchstone of all essentialities and connections? By refusing time, space and matter with the spiritualization of our materiality and with the materialization of our spirituality. Then when our dualities and numeralities become blurred and forgotten, the great integrity will re-emerge in forms of such incredible depths and dimensions of enlightenment, precisely because our temporary fragmentary consciousness created a multi-millennial amnesia.